horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Fullback Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's the star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Hey, Silver. Hooray! From the shelter of the pines high on the mountainside, the Lone Ranger studied the trail through the pass that led to Collinsville. He adjusted his binoculars carefully and trained them on the horseman who was riding in the direction of the town. At last, he turned to Tonto. There's no doubt about it, Kemos Herbie. It's Luke Rafferty. He's all dressed up. Black broadcloth coat, flowered vest, white Stetson. But there's no mistaking his face. It's not like Rafferty to travel alone. What him do in Collinsville? I don't know. His men were with him. I guess he was planning a raid on the mine. There's plenty gold there. Them not make shipment to Denver for over a month. He may have come alone to look the ground over. You want me to go town? Yes, Tonto. I'll meet you back at camp. Huh? The Lone Ranger and Tonto had made their camp in a wooded valley high above the mine. Tonto returned there shortly before dusk and reported what he had learned in town. He wait outside cafe for him. Follow him down street. Him go to Ma Grogan's. He's going to stay a while? Uh-huh. Me hear him talk to Ma on porch. Him tell her his name, Luke Reynolds, mining engineer. He want job in mine. A job? Yes, he knows enough about mines to get away with it, too. Well, Collins doesn't know me, but somehow we'll have to warn him. Uh-huh. As soon as they heard the dog barking, the Lone Ranger and Tonto leaped to their feet. A moment later, they saw the dog, a beautiful collie, golden brown with a white chest. He stopped at the edge of the clearing. Pal, come back here. Pal. Dog belonged to Colin's daughter, Mary Ann. She's coming after him. The collie suddenly decided he liked these two men, and he ran toward them, wagging his tail. The lone ranger reached down and scratched behind his ears. <laughs> so you want to be friends, pal, huh? Pal. Here, little girl. Uh, don't be frightened, Mary Ann. If Pal liked you, I know you won't hurt me. But you're an outlaw, aren't you? You're wearing a mask. No, I'm not an outlaw. I want to be your friend. All right. Would you take a message to your father for me? Of course. It will only take me a minute to write it. All right. Is the white horse yours? Yes, Marianne. Do you like him? Oh, he's beautiful. His name is Silver. The paint's name is Scout. He belongs to my friend here, Toto. How do you do? Oh, you're the first Indian I've ever met. You're not an Apache, are you? <laughs> no. What you write, Kimasabi? All that we know, Reynolds' real name is Rafferty, but he's been mixed up with Black Bart and his gunman, enough to put Collins on his guard. Oh, uh, 
There you are, Mary Ann. I'll give it to Pa right away. Good. And if he asks any questions about me, uh, give him this. A bullet? Yes. A silver bullet. I know who you are. No wonder Pa wanted to be friends with you. Well, I've heard lots of stories about you and, and about Silver and Tano. May I tell Pa who you are? <laughs> yes, Mary Ann. I'll do it right away. I have to run anyway. I'm late for supper now. Goodbye. Adios. Come on, Pa. <laughs> Mary Ann ran into the house, eager to deliver her message and tell her father about her meeting with the Lone Ranger. But she stopped short when she saw a stranger sitting at the table with her father and her aunt. Well, it's about time, Mary Ann. You sit down and eat your supper. Oh, this is Mr. Reynolds, Mary Ann. He's going to work at the Golden Lady. Hello, Mary Ann. Well, what's the matter? The cat got your tongue? Say, how do you do? I don't want anything to eat. I'm not hungry. No, it isn't like you to be shy. I'm not hungry. Mary Ann ran to her bedroom and locked the door. A moment later, her aunt was trying the knob. Open the door, young lady. You're coming out and eat your supper. I won't eat with that man. I won't come out until he goes away. His name isn't Reynolds. It's Rafferty. And he's a crook. Have you taken leave of your senses, Mary Ann? I don't care. He's a crook. The masked man told me. What masked man? I've got a message for Pa from him. What's the matter with her, Mariah? I don't know, Jim. I've never heard such talk. Oh, Pa. Something about a masked man. Come in, both of you. I don't want him to hear. Hear what? Wait till I shut the door. There. Now read it, Pa. The masked man wrote this note himself. And he said that if you ask any questions about him... I was to give you this silver bullet. For land's sake. His horse is called Silver, and Tonto was up there with him. It was a lone ranger, Pa, on it. What does the note say? That Reynolds' real name is Rafferty. That he used to be a member of Black Bart's gang. Jim, what are you going to do with that gun? I may need it. If this Reynolds is a gunman, you won't have any chance with him. Now, be reasonable, Jim. I intend to be. We'll... Wait, listen. Must have overheard him. Oh, I don't care, just as long as he's gone. Uh, why did he come here in the first place? Will he come back, Mariah? And if he does, will he come back alone? The Lone Ranger and Toto were watching Colin's house from the ridge and saw Luke right away. He took the trail that led in the opposite direction of the town, up the gulch and through the pass to the west. We go after him? He's going higher into the mountains. There's only one trail he can follow. That's right. We'll make sure the Collinses are all right before we go after him. Monsilver! Get him up, Scott. The masked man and his companion urged their mounts down the steep slope. Hardly had they drawn rain in front of Collins' house than the miner, his sister, and Mary Ann were out on the porch. Oh, 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 oh. Well, what happened? Mary Ann gave me a message. I guess Rafferty heard us talking. He lit out. We saw him go. He's heading west. What's he up to? That's what we'll have to find out. We'll let you know as soon as we do. Monsilver, hit him up, Scout! <laughs> The trail to the west was only a few feet wide, a sheer wall of rock rising to the left with a thousand-foot drop to the right. It climbed steeply for ten miles and then began to descend. Lost Valley lay below, and beyond the valley, the snow-covered reaches of the Great Divide soared toward the moonlit sky. He won't try to cross the divide tonight. No. Follow, keep sharp lookout when we get to Valley. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. The trail dipped lower. The canyon at the right was only a few hundred feet deep now. The slopes to the left were covered by a heavy growth of pine. The broad stretches of Lost Valley were also heavily wooded. But there were occasional clearings. And suddenly, the Lone Ranger raised his arm in a signal to halt. One of the clearings blazed with a light of many campfires. The Lone Ranger took out his binoculars and trained them on the campsite. Then he handed the glasses to Toto. Here, take a look. Uh, Apaches? That's right. And white men, too. Uh, Outlaws and renegades. 
That's a combination that can only mean plenty of trouble. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and the doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. You bet we're eating our Wheaties out west, including the champs. Take Eddie Matthews, born in Texarkana, Texas, and a great slugger for the Milwaukee Braves. He got a Texas start and a Wheaties start. Been eating them for years. And there's Gene Littler from California, one of the best pro golfers in the game. Listen. How he socks them off the tee. You bet Gene's a Wheaties champ. Been eating them since he was seven. A He-Man breakfast for champs and gonna be champs. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode on down to the valley. When they reached it, they found a trail through the forest that headed in the direction of the Indian camp. They rode for five miles. Then they dismounted, and leaving Silver and Scout hidden among the trees, went on foot until they neared the edge of the clearing. The Apaches and the outlaws were seated in a great circle around the largest of the fires. Council of War. Maybe so. There's Luke. That's Black Bart sitting beside him. Who's the chief? Red Fox. Him plenty bad. Uh, about a hundred braves. Uh, Rafferty talked to chief. Maybe Tonto get close enough. Hear what him say. Call out in the open? Grass long. It hide Tonto. Me try. All right. Listen to me, Red Fox. You want to drive the white men out of the mountains. Uh. But you only have a hundred men. And it won't do you any good to look for more recruits until you have more rifles and ammunition. Isn't that right? That's right. Well, I'm telling you how to get them. In Collinsville. There are not many rifles in town. No. And that's what makes it easy. Indian want rifle. There's gold in Collinsville. You fight with us and we'll wipe out the town. We'll take the gold and we'll buy you all the rifles you need. Thousands of them. Is it a bargain? Uh... As the drums began to sound, the Lone Ranger watched the slight swaying of the long grass that told him Toto was crawling back toward him. The Indian reached the edge of the clearing, and then he and the masked man hurried through the woods to their horses. Toto repeated what he had heard. Nearest troops are in Denver. It'd take week to bring them here. Yes, I know. You'll have to go after them, though. Huh. You stay in town? I'll warn Collins and help the miners organize their defense. Quiet, steady. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The Lone Ranger and Toto reached the town shortly before dawn. Toto rode on to the east, and the Lone Ranger waved goodbye to him as he dismounted in front of Collins' home. Good luck, Kimosabe. Adios. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy. Steady now. Conference with Collins followed, and Marianne was sent down to the town with a message for Nate Higgins. An hour later, all the townspeople had gathered around the Collins front porch. Word had spread as to the identity of the masked man, and as he stepped out on the porch with Collins, a murmur swept through the crowd. Folks! Folks, by now you've all heard that we're going to be attacked. Our friend here, the masked man, is going to help us defend ourselves. I want you all to listen to what he has to say. Well, first I have bad news. You have no chance of protecting your home. I understand how you feel, but we must apply an old principle if we're going to survive. United we stand, divided we fall. If you stay in your homes, you'll be cut off one by one, burnt out. The only place that can be defended is the mine. We're short of firearms and ammunition. We must concentrate our resources. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, but what about our furniture and all our supplies? We have a little time to get ready for this attack, I hope. I don't believe it will come until around midnight tonight. You can move supplies and beds into the mine. 
You'll be living there for some time. What's that? Luke Rafferty won't give up until he gets all the gold there is in town. And that gold will be inside the mine. I say give it to him. How about that, Collins? Don't our lives mean more to you than your gold? Yes, you know they do, Mac, but the mask man hasn't finished yet. Now listen to him. A bribe won't help. You can only buy security for a little while. Give these outlaws and renegades gold, and they'll use it to buy rifles. When they have enough rifles, you'll find that the Apaches are only interested in scalps. No, you can't buy security. You must be willing to fight for it. A fury of activity seized the town. The long main shaft that drove straight into the mountain was used as living quarters. The tunnels that led off it were used to stable the horses. Feed was brought in for them, and all day long the women cooked. Well, Ryan, I've never seen so much bread in my life. There'll be no cooking inside the mine, Marianne. This will have to last us for a week. Couldn't we have some pies and cake? The bread tastes like cake when you're hungry. The men threw up breastworks around the opening of the mine. Rifles and revolvers were cleaned and oiled. And all day long, men and women watched the sun, working with desperate energy. By midnight, the tunnels of the mine were aglow with candles. The town below was dark and deserted. Then there was nothing to do but wait. At 11 o'clock, the outlaws and the Indians stormed into the gulch from the west. Their first charge carried them past the silent watchers at the mine entrance. Ten minutes later, the town at the bottom of the gulch was a flaming torch. Then the attackers retraced their steps and circled the mine offices. Searching for gold. It won't be long before they realize. No. Keep down, men. Down. The Indian yells died down. A conference was taking place in front of the office. Then the log building burst into flames, and by the light of the fire, Luke Rafferty saw the defenses around the entrance of the mine. Outlaws and Indians charged toward the opening. The men at the mine waited quietly, their guns ready, their faces grim with determination. At last, the Lone Ranger gave the command. Open fire! The first charge was broken, but a second followed almost at once, and then a third. Finally, there was a respite. Rafferty and Red Fox realized the defenses of the mine couldn't be carried by a frontal assault. The renegades withdrew to safe cover, and the night faded quietly into dawn. They're sure to attack again tonight, if only to make us waste our ammunition. What will we do when it's gone? We'll do what we have to do, Nate. We'll keep on fighting. The day passed, and when night came, the renegades began a series of sudden attacks and quick withdrawals. Nate Higgins had guessed their tactics. They were making the defenders use up their ammunition. But there were no casualties that second night, and by the third night, some of the wounded were ready for duty again. The third night was a repetition of the second. The fourth night passed, and then toward dawn on the fifth night, the defenders of the mine had to beat back the most savage attack. Shooting stopped. The ammunition boxes in the mine were empty. It's come. Next time... All the candles must be put out. What good is that? We'll line the walls of the tunnel. When they come in, we'll try to stop them with the butts of our guns. A few of them, maybe. As many as we can. The men waited in the inky darkness of the tunnel. The Lone Ranger stood closest to the opening. Half an hour passed, and then he saw half a dozen shadows creeping closer and closer to the earthworks. There were many more behind them. In a few seconds, they would realize there was no defending force behind the ramparts. The masked man set himself for the charge. It came. The Lone Ranger stepped forward to meet the first man through the opening. He brought his gun down. He caught the sagging Indian in his arms and used him as a shield as he continued to block the opening. He hit the next savage, and the next. He heard the bugle in the distance. But so intent was he on meeting the assault that he didn't realize what it meant. Not until suddenly the opening of the tunnel was clear and Jim Collins was grasping his arm. They're here. We're saved. The army? Yes, yes, look. The miners ran out of the tunnel. They could see the Indians racing toward their horses, but already the cavalry was thundering through the burnt-out town. It was growing light in the east, and slowly the flag at the head of the column showed its colors. One group dashed ahead to close off the western pass. The other troop headed straight for the Indians. Half of them were dismounted. The others saw they were cut off from any escape to the west, but they fired desperately. 
And still the miners realize there should be only one final result. Their relief flooded over in laughter and cheers as the cavalry closed in. The battle ended as the sun rose. The prisoners were secured and the troopers made camp. The townspeople moved among them, eager to express their gratitude, while the colonel and Jim Collins surveyed the charred remnants of the town. It's a sad thing, Jim. What is? These men and women. They're happy now, but sooner or later they're going to realize what they've lost. Every one of their homes has been destroyed. They haven't lost anything, colonel. There's $50,000 in gold in that mine. But... That belongs to you. No, 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 it doesn't. It belongs to them. They're the ones who saved it from the renegades. And that gold will build new homes for them. You mean... They're not just men and women who work for me, Colonel. They're my friends, my family, as much as Marianne and Mariah are. We fought together well, and now we'll build together for the future. Nothing can discourage us after what's happened to us. It was a heroic stand. I didn't mean the fight... I was talking about the mask man, meeting him and knowing him. Somehow we all seem to have borrowed some of his strength and courage. I I don't know. It's hard to explain. You don't have to. A lot of people feel that way after meeting him. It's no wonder, Jim. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll soon copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger.